Hello YouTube, this is Bruno. We've been using the data pack with the 121 features on our server for a few weeks. And I've used AutoCraft in a number of different ways. I believe some of them are fun and I'll share some more of these designs in this video. But this video is the first in a three-part series about my AutoCrafter factory and I'll just go along with a term that Tango Tech used recently in Hermitcraft 10. I've been chipping away at designing this. It's almost ready, but it's too much to do in one video. So this will be a series of three videos. And the basic idea is that this is a normal storage system with three rows. So we have three item filters per slice, but the lowest row contains autocrafted items. That means I have a fully automated process that keeps all these chests stocked. All I have to do is throw the ingredients in some shulker box unloaders and after a sufficient time, all chests in the lowest row will be completely full. And of course I want one shulker box unloader per ingredient so even though half of the items require redstone dust, I want just one shulker box unloader stocked with redstone blocks that supplies all autocrafters. So here's what you'll see in this video, so that you can decide if it's worth your time. This first video in the series introduces a number of autocrafter setups, various ways to wire autocrafters from simple compacting setups to setups that provide my ingredients for my factory. Ingredients like chests, gold nuggets, from gold blocks, and so on. These setups are additional to the one I already described in a video a couple of weeks ago. These two videos together will give you quite a lot of different setups, a few tools for your toolbox, if you want to do autocrafter setups yourself. The remaining two videos will deal with the factory. So the second video will show how I connect the autocrafter setups to my storage so that autocrafting is triggered whenever these chests are not completely full and also how I protect the autocrafters against uh, storage hoppers running dry and how I request the ingredients. The third video will piece all of this together, including the ingredient supply system. So for example, if we want to autocraft crafters, we need some magic in place that makes sure that crafting tables and droppers are also supplied and transported to this autocrafter here. All this redstone here is fairly fresh and it's quite possible that you guys will find better ways to do some things but I want to give you some tools for your toolbox how to autocraft stuff. But first, let's clear something up. Some of you really didn't like my last video about the copper bulb filter because it uses a state. And yes, using a state is in general not a good idea, especially in an item filter. But to me, it's all about flexibility and also fun. I mean, look, there are at least 50 ways to create a clock in Minecraft. And here's a clock using the copper bulb, which I believe is a six game tick clock and therefore a bit unusual. Having more copper bulbs as pulse dividers also gives a 12 game tick and a 24 game tick clock. But this does not mean that this clock is better than the existing 50 clocks. It just means that we now have 51 clocks. And in some cases, maybe this design comes in handy if you happen to need a six game tick clock or a 12 game tick clock under these space constraints. And it's the same with item filters. The standard impulse filter has no state and is cheaper to build, so you could argue it's objectively better. But there are some cases where you can't fit the standard filter and need something with a different layout. So this alternative filter is just another tool in your toolbox. And it gives you a lot of freedom, as you can see here, because using one or sometimes two observers to relay the signals allows you to wire this filter in very different ways and under very different space constraints, but always one by tileable. So the main argument is that the copper bulb state could break on unloading or on a server crash. And on our survival server, I have used the copper bulb quite a lot and never run into any of these issues. But let's be very clear, this is experimental and new redstone that we are talking here. Some of that will turn out to be very useful and others perhaps not so. Time will tell. Then there's the fact that I must have built thousands of impulse filters in my life, perhaps tens of thousands. So at this time, I'm just happy that I can try some new things. But man, this copper bulb gives a ton of flexibility, not just for filters. For those of you who haven't played a lot with the copper bulb, it's a one block flip-flop. That is, power it and it turns on, power it again and it turns off. Of course, we could do that before, but not that small, one white tileable and with the ability to read the signal on both sides. So let's start with the autocrafter designs. And the first one comes from a viewer named Argos, who asked me why I didn't include it in my last Autocrafter video. And I feel slightly embarrassed, 
but I simply never thought of this design and I also never saw it, but of course it's straightforward and it's really elegant. It's adaption of the way, for example, a mango powers his bee in honeycomb farm. We take a comparatively rating and as items come in, these nine pieces of redstone dust start to power up. And when we have nine items, this block is powered and powers the auto crafter. So this is a very secure way because we will never craft any pressure plates or iron bars. In fact, it's in one way tileable because if you have another setup like this to the side, this block is never powered because the signal strength only ever reaches one. Now the only drawback is that it's quite laggy because changing redstone dust is in fact one of the most laggy things in Minecraft that you can do. You will of course be fine if you use one of these crafters or maybe five, but uh, if you really have a ton of auto crafters, I probably would go with a different design. But thanks Argos. So the second design is a variant of an auto crafter I already showed you. This was the way, for example, how I crafted up 2000 shulkers of gold nuggets to ingots and then later to blocks. And it's simply a compactor that takes input from a shulker box unloader. So this is a six times hopper speed shulker box unloader using the minecarts. What I changed is simply the powering of the auto crafter. And here's the alternative to this more laggy variant. You just use a comparator reading and gate it with another redstone signal that has level 9. Of course, this is still laggy because we have three redstone dust, but they change less often and they are shorter. This is not one wide tileable though, but in this case I need a really fast setup because these items can come in at rather high speed. We have six times hopper speed coming in bone meal, for example, so I needed something that reacts quickly. But the reason for showing this is that you can modify this, for example, to craft bones to bone meal and then immediately to bone blocks. And what we do here is that I replaced three of the droppers with autocrafters who all face into this autocrafter. So they all get bones and this is so fast that you can't really see it. Using this clock we strongly power the dropper facing into the autocrafter and therefore weakly power the autocrafter. So the bone goes into the autocrafter and the bone meal is immediately crafted up and goes into the middle autocrafter. And if all three lines are active, which they should be if everything is wired correctly, then the middle autocrafter will receive nine bone meal at double hopper speed and immediately craft it to bone blocks. And the system is safe because the bone meal comes in multiples of three, so we will never get a single bone meal in there, which could lead to crafting die. Which was a remark by IceMonster2174. And of course, you're absolutely correct. But we do have to change something because we create the bone blocks at double hopper speed and this system here, of course, sucks out the item only at single hopper speed, so this hopper here would run full and this comp dropper eventually. Now this is rather crude because I didn't intend it in, a, in this way before, but we power this dropper and this is facing to the side. So this will output the bone blocks into this dropper here. This hopper will suck out items as fast as it can, hopper speed, but the remaining items go over here. So we have basically two lines, both work at hopper speed and here everything goes into the same shulker box and then into a shulker box loader. So this is a really fast way to craft your bones from a wither skeleton farm or from a universal mob farm into bone blocks. Of course, if you have the auto crafter in the first place, you will probably do this at the farm. So the farm would output bone blocks, but I had like 50 shulker boxes of bones laying around from my wither skelly farm and I wanted to craft them up. So this is how you can do that. Of course, if we create bone blocks, we also have to convert them back to in, into bone meal. For example, this is a version of Radisius crop farm. And the principle is rather simple. You place crops in here and you have three dispensers bone mealing the spot. And the crops are broken because the light level goes to zero. So whenever this piston is closed, it will break the crops. So they will go into this water stream here. And this is a pretty fast farm. It can produce carrots at, I don't know, five times hopper speed or something like that wheat at almost double hopper speed. But of course, the farm also uses a ton of bone meal, it sucks out the bone meal at six times hopper speed or 54,000 per hour. Now I had this already built before we introduced the crafter. So I was just looking for a way to put this in. So the pattern I'm following here is that I have a buffer chest. So this is a chest that always contains some bone meal and I have two minecarts sucking out the bone meal and distribute it over six hoppers. I have the crafter converting the bone blocks and putting the output into a chest. 
And that's always possible. You can always have to craft the output items into another container. And this is the way to go if you get more than one item. Here you get nine bone meal out of every bone block. And then I just have a comparator reading this. And whenever the chest is empty, I will craft new items. So let's take out something and you see this observer clock activates and we get 45 new items. The calculation that you always have to do is, is this fast enough? We need six times hopper speed or 15 bone meal per second. If the bone blocks come in a topper speed, we get 2.5 bone blocks per second in this crafter here. So this is about 22 bone meal. And of course the two minecarts work at eight times hopper speed each. So this is quite fast enough. But you couldn't do this with bones. I mean, you could do something like this with bones that you fill this chest until it has signal strength 14. Now, if you condition on 15, this might be a problem because the crafter will spit out bone meal if this chest is full. So you have to make sure that there's always room in this chest, but level 14 is fine. So if you have bones, you can, for example, craft up a double chest of bone meal and you can fill up, of course, all of this dropper system and the dispensers. So you will probably have four or five double chests worth of bone meal in the system here. And then you use the farm. But I guess after 15 minutes or so, you might have to take a break and wait until the system is refilled. So the better way, in my opinion, is just to craft the bones to bone blocks. And this is what I do with this contraption here. And I use this pattern whenever I want to decompress items, if you like. So for example, I want to craft gold blocks to gold nuggets. And this is part of my ingredient supply for my factory. So I want to have gold nuggets for golden carrots. And I want to have slime balls for sticky pistons. And I want to have paper for rockets. And I want to have chests for hoppers. And of course there will be more just chucker box unloaders for the stuff like gunpowder. And the idea is that I have a container with the ingredient and there's a magic process that tells me I need nuggets. And then some clock will activate and the nuggets will go into a water stream and be brought to the factory, to the auto crafters. But of course, first I need to create the nuggets. And here I just use gold blocks because a double chest lasts forever. The gold blocks needs to be crafted to ingots and I can't put the ingots into another auto crafter because I have no way to tell if this auto crafter is full. And if this auto crafter is full and I would have the auto crafter here in this spot and I would activate this auto crafter, then it would work and the items would be just sped out and be all over the place. So the auto crafter never checks if there's room in the container where it's crafting the item into. So the version I use, and if you have a better idea, just let me know, this is, would be very interesting to me, is to use an intermediate container. And if I take out items, then this auto crafter will be triggered and craft up a few items. Then I have a hopper going into another auto crafter and then I have the same principle, I have an intermediate container. The same would work with decorated pots, but of course you can't look into decorated pots. So in this video, I will still use droppers. And to be honest, if I decompress items, if I decompress gold blocks, I don't really care about nine stacks of ingots, but of course you can use decorated pots and just, and just use up one stack here. And next to that is the same setup using slime balls. And there I have a shaka box unloader. Uh, and you have to be a bit careful if you put a shaka box unloader next to a different system. Of course, these shaka box unloaders are one wide tileable. This is from Summers the Sage. But in this case, this works out fine. So we have a shaka box unloader for slime blocks. And the slime block blocks will be crafted up to slime balls with exactly the same principle. And here we have another setup that has to be a bit different because here we need to craft up sugarcane to paper. But of course, sugarcane could be crafted to sugar. So we can just power this gotta crafter on a clock. So we use one of the setups that I described that will craft whenever the auto crafter is full. So this is quite safe. And the idea here is that we lock this hopper if we have enough sugarcane down here. So we read this container. We have a state transition with a copper bulb. And this is in fact one of the examples where if you would try to do this with redstone torches, you would have interference with these pistons in the neighboring slice. So here's an example where I could make the system one byte by using the copper bulb and not redstone torches. But anyway, so if we take out something here, then the copper bulb changes state, opens this hopper, we get items into the crafter, we get new items into this dropper, and then the system toggles again. 
And a special case is chest crafting here. Um, we have a shulker box unloader with locks. And the locks go into an auto crafter, and the auto crafter goes directly into another auto crafter. And I, I power this auto crafter strongly using this clock. And we strongly power the upper auto crafter, and also weakly power the lower auto crafter. And if the lower auto crafter was empty, then we will just have four planks in it. This is not a valid recipe, so it will craft nothing. We don't use bamboo, because for bamboo you would end up with pressure plates. And then the second time we put in four more planks and then we craft a chest using the lower auto crafter. So if we just take out some chests here, you can see this process running all the time. Maybe use a more silent clock, this is rather noisy, but it works. And it will work until this dropper and this hopper is full with chests and we have something in here. Okay, all of these recipes were to some degree simple because they used only one type of ingredient. What if we have more? And the simplest way to do is a pre-filled autocrafter. For example, this is a piston autocrafter. We have a hopper leading into it containing all of the ingredients. And if you activate the crafter, it will spit out one piston and the hoppers will replace all of the ingredients. And this is the approach that I use for my factory. Because I can just have a lot of autocrafter in a row, have hoppers containing the ingredients and a water stream bringing in fresh ingredients, so they would fill up these hoppers here. The process is of course slow, because we need over 3 seconds to refill all of the ingredients. So you can basically power this crafter once every 4 seconds. And of course we are in major trouble if we run out of ingredients, because we craft too often. Because at some point the hopper will run empty, and with some luck we will just have a crafter that is not functional, if we are unlucky, we might end up with slabs or pressure plate. In any case, something we really don't want. We have to make sure that this hopper always contains enough ingredients. And I have a system in place that makes sure that these hoppers will always remain stocked. And I will explain that in the next video of the series. Of course, you can do a generic crafter. And I already presented a version of that in an older video as well. So this is a system where you can just fill in any recipe and you have the ingredients for each slot in a shulker box. If you hit this note block here, what happens is the crafter is activated, so the system is empty, and then we have a dropper line bringing in all of the ingredients, and we have an observer that pulses nine times, so we will move the items nine times. So basically you can craft once every three seconds or so, you have to make sure that this crafter is full. And also I have a placeholder system, so for example if you wanted to craft scaffolding with two empty slots then you could use rotten flesh for these placeholder blocks. Of course it's probably easier to just get rid of that and if you want to have craft scaffolding lock the two slots that you need like so and then put in the ingredients for scaffolding. Of course this is quite a lot of redstone but it's very flexible. So I use this setup for items that I don't keep stocked auto-crafted. So the principle in my factory is I chose perhaps the 20 items that I need the most and I want to keep these chests filled at all times and also the shulker boxes. So for example, I can just grab a shulker box of pistons or of sticky pistons. I also have objects that I maybe want to auto-craft but don't need in these amounts. Let's say I want to auto-craft activator rails then I would set up this contraption, let it run for a while, and then drop in the activator rails here. But for this autocrafter setup we need something that is much more slim, much more easy to control. And this is just a setup that for each slice of the system we have run autocrafter. So what about recipes that require unstackable items like dispensers? I mean the principle is rather easy. An autocrafter that crafts the dispensers and this has to be pre-filled with a bow. We have a second autocrafter that crafts the bows and we power this autocrafter strongly. What happens if we hit this observer that we first craft this autocrafter, it will craft a dispenser and spit it out and then it will weakly power the second crafter and this will craft a bow. And this happens pretty much at the same time, immediately after each other. So this happens before this hopper has a chance to put in anything here. The bow from this crafter will go into this empty slot before the hopper has the chance to bring in new ingredients. This is quite an elegant way to craft dispensers. So that's it for the first video. Now you've seen all the types of autocrafter setups that I use in my factory. 
so that I have never ever to craft a piston again. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please subscribe so that you don't miss the rest of the series. And leave a comment if you have questions or ideas for improvement. See you next time. Bye bye.